What's going on guys, Juice Messi here and welcome to a brand new video. Welcome to your daily dose of transfer gossip. And today is going to be Sunday the 26th of January. We have confirmed us to go through as well as the rumours. So just before we get started, if you could do that good stuff by leaving a like rating, press the subscribe button if you're new, and press the bell notification next to it so you never miss an upload. My previous episode will be down below in the description box, and current schedule every day at 8am UK time will be a new transfer update. And finally, in the comment section below, what player are you hoping gets a future star on FIFA 20? Right, so we have got a fair amount of confounders to go through today, and it's probably because I missed yesterday's upload, and I do apologise for that. Uh, but the first one is going to be that Udinese have re-signed left-back Marvin Ziegler from Watford. It's an undisclosed fee, and um, I believe he was there on loan last season. Jermaine Defoe has signed a pre-contract at Rangers and he'll join the club on a permanent basis this summer. He signed a contract until 2021 and technically right now he's still on loan from Bournemouth. Fulham have completed the permanent signing of Bobby Reid from Cardiff City. It's a contract until 2023 as a fee of around £7.5 million. Inter Milan have signed Chelsea's Victor Moses on loan until the end of the season and it also includes an option to buy at the end of it. And um, this, this went through a couple days ago so it's not really a new one uh, but I don't think I mentioned it in the previous episode. Sampdoria have signed defender Lorenzo Tonelli from Napoli on loan until the end of the season. It also includes an obligation to buy for a fee of around 2.5 million euros. Brighton have made midfielder Aaron Moyes' loan deal from Huddersfield Town a permanent now for £5 million pounds or just over that, and he signed a three and a half year contract. I think £5 million pounds does represent a good value for money deal because he has impressed for Brighton and uh, has also got Premier League experience. The next transfer is in Spain and it's going to be Jesus Vallejo. He spent the first half of the season playing for Wolves on loan from Real Madrid, uh, but realistically he didn't really play too much football or anywhere near the amount that he wanted to. So now he's gone on loan to Granada for the rest of the season. A transfer I mentioned in the last episode is Cranvita. The Argentine centre midfielder has joined Monterrey in Mexico, that's from Russian outfit Zenit St. Petersburg. They've completed the transfer for about 5.5 million euros or I think $7 million. Newcastle have completed their first bit of business so far this window, and that's by bringing in Valentino Lazaro from Inter Milan. It's initially a loan deal until the end of the season, and he'll wear the number 23 shirt. The Premier League side, though, will pay 1.5 million euros for the temporary basis, with an option to buy for around 23.5 million. There were rumours saying that instead he'd be going to RB Leipzig in the Bundesliga, but he's decided to go to Newcastle, and uh, I imagine we'll get a good amount of game time there. RB Leipzig have announced the signing of Spain international Danny Olmo from Dinamo Zagreb. Uh, the fee is believed to be an initial 20 million euros, and the Bundesliga club will pay a further 5 million in performance related bonuses, while Dinamo Zagreb will receive a percentage of any fee Leipzig sell Olmo for. They haven't said how much a percentage is, but I think it's a fantastic signing. They managed to beat the likes of AC Milan and there were reports saying that Barcelona wanted him back and other teams in Spain and the 21 year old has signed a contract until 2024. I know a lot of people are against how Leipzig are run as a club but the, the way they are run in the uh, scouting side of things, how they bring players in constantly, have constant talent coming through, I, I think it's very very hard to look past that. Again, people don't like the amount of money invested but they invest it so so well. Just look at the profits both Leipzig and uh, Salzburg make from players. Like they buy them for minimal fees and they end up selling them for a massive, massive profit on top of it. Crystal Palace are in talks to bring former Atletico Madrid star Yannick Carrasco to Selhurst Park. This story is according to various outlets and apparently the Belgian international is now desperate to leave the Chinese Super League. It, he has been able to move to the Premier League now for about a year and a half. During the summer window, it was to Arsenal, but nothing ever happened for him. And it could also come into play for the fact that the CSL now has a wage cap, which means that his overall salary has dropped massively. A transfer now for Arsenal fans is that they are in talks with Flamengo in Brazil over the signing of centre-back Pablo Mari. The player is set to undergo a medical in London this weekend, and uh, it might have already happened to be fair. Uh, he has bid farewell to his current teammates and the club's coaching staff, and he's set to complete a £7.5 million transfer to the Emirates. 
Um, he has been pictured arriving in Heathrow Airport and being greeted by Edu, so it looks more likely it'll be happening very shortly. Will he sort out their defensive issues? We'll have to wait and see, but it's definitely a right step. They're looking to bring defenders in and at least move on players they've got like Mustafi. Manchester United are looking into the possibility of signing former Watford striker Odin Agallo on loan. He currently plays in the Chinese Super League and uh, that story is from Sky Sports News. And they also mention a second striker which is Slomani. He's currently on loan to AS Monaco from Leicester City and having a very good campaign and uh, apparently was left out of today's squad for Monaco's match. Jean-Kevin Augustin has agreed a deal to join Leeds United on loan from RB Leipzig and this story is from the keep. The loan deal though will also include an option to buy and you would imagine if it's successful and they get promoted to the Premier League that, that option will be taken up. Uh, and the Athletics' Phil Hay has confirmed that Augustin wants to join Leeds and the main reason for that is because he wants to play under Marcelo Bielsa. And that is one thing that Leeds will have if they do get to the Premier League, that so many players like admire Bielsa's style of football and they want to be part of his project. And RMC Sport do add that Monaco is set to terminate Augustin's loan deal to allow him to join Leeds. They were linked to the likes of Shea Adams from uh, Southampton and a couple other strikers, but looks instead they're opting to sign the Frenchman. The next story comes from a sport, and they're saying that Barcelona are considering a surprise move for Chelsea striker Olivier Giroud. But Sky Italia do now add that Inter will return for the striker Giroud, that's after a deal to sign Napoli's Fernando Llorente fell through. There were reports saying that Llorente was part of the Politano deal, like it'd be 25 million plus uh, Llorente going to Inter, but it turns out that's not the case, and they still need a striker. But at the same time, Chelsea now have an injury to Tammy Abraham, so that transfer might be a bit of an issue to take place, and uh, Barsha is still in the market for a replacement for the injured Luis Suarez. AC Milan want to sign Florentino Luiz from Benfica on an 18 month deal. It also includes a 50 million euro option to buy, there's also interest from OGC Nice and Ren. And in 18 months time it could be very profitable for Benfica because if the transfer of Florentino Luiz does go ahead to Milan and they take up the option to buy, that's 50 million. But add on top of that the Jensen Fernandez deal to Tottenham, if they take that option to buy up, it's another 50, so a year and a half's time they might be bringing in 100 million euros for the pair. Gremio star Everton, who was into Borussia Dortmund the other day, he's actually close to joining Premier League side Everton. The Brazilian side are holding out for 40 million euros for the 23 year old, but the Toffees are confident of talking them down from that price and are looking to get the deal completed before the transfer window closes. And that story is from a journalist called Pedro Ernesto. And he would be a new player added to FIFA Ultimate Team for the first time since like FIFA 15 or FIFA 16. It's been a very long time out of the game. Um, I'm not sure how good his stats will be, but a lot of predictions have him at like an 82 rating. Napoli forward Dries Mertens will not be joining Monaco in the summer according to Le Ten Sport. The Belgian's contract has entered its final six months with Chelsea and Inter among the clubs looking to snap him up. Monaco have also been rumoured to have an interest in the player. But a relative of Mertens has told Le Ten Sport that a move to the Principality is not a possibility. Inter Miami are hoping to seal a move for Real Betis winger Christian Teo in the coming days. It's according to Stadio Deportivo. The 28-year-old has played sparingly for Betis this season, with Celta Vigo, Getafe and Espanyol all hoping to move for the former Barca man. But Inter Miami have stolen a march on those La Liga sides and Betis are holding out for Teo's 12 million euro release clause. Now we have got Kazawa, who has featured a lot so far this summer transfer window, but the main links, it was a move to Arsenal in particular. But Fabrizio Romano, who is considered very reliable, has a story, and he is saying Kazawa is going to join Juventus, and in the opposite direction, De Chilio is going to Paris Saint-Germain. The deal is close to being completed very soon, and personal terms have been agreed. And now both clubs are finalising the final details to complete the transfer. Thomas Tuchel did say that Kazara is very unlikely to be sold in this transfer window, but it looks like now because De Chilio is pretty much a straight out replacement for him, um, they're happy to make the transfer go ahead. So for Juve they get a new left back in to provide backup to Alexandro, and PSG get a versatile defender, and it probably means that Thomas Munier will be sold. Leon are interested in adding Borussia Dortmund defender Manuel Akanji on loan according to Foot Mercato. 
The 24-year-old could be difficult to prize away from the Bundesliga side though, as he started all but one of their league matches in 2019-2020. Leonov also been linked with Valencia's Ezekiel Garay and Roma's Juan Jesus. They're looking to bring a centre back in because Marcelo is looking to leave the club and um, Akanji, he's their main option. Arsenal, Atletico Madrid and Thomas Lamar are all in contact about a possible deal, but an agreement is nowhere near being completed. This story comes from RMC. All transfer window long, Lamar has been linked to a lot of different clubs and his future Atletico is very much up in the air. And it looks like if they want to bring Cavani in in January, Lamar has got to go. Manchester United haven't given up on signing James Madison from Leicester according to the Independent. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will look to bring in the 23-year-old during the summer transfer window, but the Foxes are likely to demand a huge fee for a prized asset. Christian Eriksen is close to sealing a £16.8 million transfer from Tottenham to Inter Milan. It also could see him earn up to £320,000 per week according to Sky Italia. Obviously that wage does seem very very high but they are getting it for a very cut price fee but my guess is that it won't be £320,000 all the time, that's after additional incentives. A transfer I mentioned the other day is William Jose linked to Tottenham from Real Sociedad. So Fabrizio Romano is saying that currently right now Sociedad want £21 million for their forward, but Tottenham only want to offer £10 million. And this comes just a couple of days after reports in France saying that they were willing to pay €50 million, Euros, so they're about £40 million off that. And you've got to think about it, that when Harry Kane does return to fitness, the striker will return as a backup. Um, that's William Jose, by the way. Jose will be a backup to Harry Kane. Um, so for £21 million, it's not really a crazy amount of money to be spending, especially compared to that initial £50 million. But building Germany are sent Tottenham are interested in Borussia Dortmund striker Paco Alcacer. He's also blinked to former club Valencia, and he is looking to make the move in this January transfer window. And it somewhat ties into the next story from Sport, that Barca are seeking to finalise a loan deal for Valencia striker Rodrigo. They failed with a similar move for Arsenal's Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, though Aubameyang does want to make the switch according to the article. And the reason I say it's tied in to the previous one is because if Valencia want to bring Paco Alcacer back to the club, they've got to sell or loan out a player first. And Rodrigo was very close to leaving during the summer transfer window because he almost joined Atletico Madrid back then and they struggled to finalise a deal. But that guys is going to be it for this video. So if you could do that good stuff by leaving a like rating, press the subscribe button if you're new and press the bell notification next to it so you never miss an upload. My previous episode will be down below in the description box and current schedule every day at 8am UK time will be a new transfer update. So thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time.